Good morning, everybody. I do see Jeff and some others are standing back there that the new requirement at church is face mask and sunglasses, uh, depending on where you're sitting here today. <laughs> but it is great to see the sun shining through this morning and to be able to come here and, and uh, worship together. So we appreciate everybody that's able to come and everybody that's able to join us online. So I just uh, encourage you as we do this holiday season to continue to think of everybody in our own church family as those in our community as well as we're able to celebrate together this incredible birthday coming up. So I've asked Chad to read our, verse, our first uh, Bible verse for the day. Um, praise the Lord, my soul, all my utmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known all his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abundant in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or pay us according to our inequities. For as love as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For, the, for he knows how we are formed, he remembers that we are dust. Thank you, Chad. We bow our heads in prayer. God, we come here with lots of things going through our minds. We have the busyness of the season. We have the health issues that we face and other people face. And, and at the same time, we struggle and try to turn towards you and focus on you. And sometimes that's hard. Give us today this chance to take an hour out and truly be at peace, be calm, be with you. Let us take the love that you have shown to us and extend it out to those that we come in contact with during this week and during this holiday season. We know there's lots of people that need the message of Christ right now. They need something to hang on to. And we know what it is. We think of people that are going through these times that just have no meaning to life. And they struggle with that. And we know that it doesn't matter what's going on, that we do have a meaning. And we do have a purpose in our life. And we just thank you that we can be here today and just be celebrating. Thank you for our many blessings. Give us the strength to do what we need to do as we move forward over the next couple months and through this season. We bless those who have allowed us to continue to worship here in church and give them strength and wisdom as we move forward. Amen.
Our next scripture reading is Luke 1, 5 to 20. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing all of the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well along in years. Once when Zachariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom and the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zacharias saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. Many of the people of Israel will bring back to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and a disobedience to the wisdom of the righteous, to be ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, but how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel answered, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their proper time. Now the video. What do you mean you can't speak? You put that down and talk to me, Zachariah. You went to the temple to burn incense and now you can't speak. Because you doubt it. <laughs> what does that even mean? You doubted what an angel told you. Oh, now it's all making sense. <laughs> Are you feeling all right? Huh? Maybe you should sit down. Oh, I should sit down. Listen, whatever game you're playing, I really wanted to stop, Zachariah. It isn't funny. This isn't funny, Zachariah. <sighs> An angel told you this. The angel said that our prayers have been heard. That you, my love, will bear a son. That we will be filled with joy and gladness. And that many will rejoice at his birth. Like Elijah, he will prepare our people for the Lord. <laughs> what am I going to do? Oh, 
I'm too old to be a mother. And you, you can't even speak. Oh, you can't even speak until he's bored. <laughs> oh, that might not be the worst thing. I can't wait to tell my cousin Mary. We will call him Zachariah, yes? I don't know about you, but those getting up in age like Julie and I, I'm not sure I want to burn incense today, right? <laughs> the next uh, Bible reading is about Mary that visits Elizabeth after this time. At this time, Mary got ready and hurried to the town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of the Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped from joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her, with her accomplished. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. A couple things uh, before we get started. Uh, we will have a Christmas Eve service that will be in the parking lot. We will sing uh, four Christmas carols with scripture in the midst. More details of that will come. Uh, this will allow us to sing, to be outside, to be distanced, and to lift our voices in unison to God in this season of anticipation. Uh, someone came in this morning and said, I, I look forward to hearing your message. I thought it, I didn't say it, but I look forward to hearing it also. Um, no one knows. Uh, <laughs> there is so much depth in these passages that I would encourage you to go home today and read uh, Luke 1 and 2 a couple times over and just ask God to allow it to to dwell in your spirit to ruminate in your spirit and to bring forth good fruit so I'm gonna break this down a little bit at a time and as we continue in this Advent season with the blessed Today's focus is, Blessed are the, mercy, uh, the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. And we're going to tie back to why Zechariah and Elizabeth are here. So, Luke opens this passage with, In the days of Herod. Now, Barclay, Barclay points to the fact that Luke may not have been Jewish, that he was actually a Greek and one of the 
few, if not the only, non-Jewish person in Scripture to, to be included in the canon. And it says, in the days of Herod. Now, do any of us, when we hear King Herod, do any of us have positive thoughts come to mind? Just imagine being them. And the, the depth of this setting cannot be stressed enough. 400 years of silence. 400 years the people of God have not heard the voice of God. 400 years our country is not even that old. And so when you hear in the days of King Herod, he was known as a tyrant. He was known as making their territory more Hellenistic. He was not viewed favorably by the Jewish people. It's in this tension, in this dark backdrop, that Luke sets this passage. For us, we might say, you know, uh, when Lincoln was president, or Kennedy, there are images that come to mind when you mention a leader's name. And then we are introduced to Zechariah, who is a priest. A division of Abijah. Now, a side note on the video. Um, that seems like uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth set in colonial America. Um, I would imagine Abijah slightly darker than us. Um, but he's a priest. And both he and his wife are from the line of Aaron. Like, this is, this is high. When you talk about holy people, when you talk about set apart, they're both from this set apart line. And it says, the, the qualities that they carry, the righteous, both were righteous and blameless. Following all the commandments and the requirements of the Lord. These, when, when you think of holy people, when you think of people you want to model your life after, these would have been the people. And yet, again, we have this tension. But they had no child. Elizabeth was barren, and they were both old. Advanced in years. What they saw as a blessing of God for the righteous, a child, to carry the line, was not given to them. And this would have caused a deep tension in the Jewish understanding. And it said it happened while he was performing his priestly service. Barclay points out that there would have been thousands of priests, possibly a thousand priests in this area, so they would rotate out. And I mean, to, to light the incense, to burn the incense, would have been like a, a one-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It would have been a, a one-in-a-lifetime chance to do this. It would have been the high point of your priestly service. And it says he was chosen by Lot. They did this because they didn't want human interference. They figure if the priest was chosen by Lot, that was God's will. And I mean, I've heard stories of uh, both Mennonite and Brethren background where uh, ministers were chosen by Lot, free ministers. There was a... There was a piece of paper put in a Bible and the Bibles there would be multiple Bibles laid up on the altar and these men would come up and whoever pulled the, the Bible with the slip of paper would be called it's not that far removed from our history and so he enters the temple and the people are outside the temple Offering prayer. 
And the fact that he's in the temple, he's right outside the Holy of Holies. There was, there was only one other entrance that he would have gone to. And every time you got closer to the Holy of Holies, you needed to be more, more pure. So there were faithful people, but as far as like following the commandments and being pure before the sight of God, Zechariah could go closer. And I find this setting really interesting. He's, he's in the temple. He's the only one in the temple, and he's, he's before the altar, burning the incense, and an angel of the Lord appears, and it frightens him. And this is something that Kent would always point to. When we, when we imagine an angel of the Lord, it's not like the, the, the fluffy-winged little pudgy babies that fly on uh, clouds of marshmallows. These were fiery beings that caused tremendous awe. It makes me think of Isaiah when he received his call, when he received his vision. Woe is me, for I am ruined. It is the very holiness and presence of God And it said fear gripped him. And there's so many intricate details here. And this is why I want you to, to read through it again and again and slowly. Because the personal intersects the national as well as the international and all of time. The angel says, your prayers, your petitions have been heard. This is meant directly for Zechariah. Your petitions have been heard, and you will be given a son. This was meant for him. And you will give him the name John, you will have joy and gladness. His son, even in his old age, will bring him joy and gladness. But it goes one step further. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and many will rejoice at his birth. We're starting to fan out. Not only will John bring his parents joy and gladness. Many will rejoice, and he will be great before the Lord. you got to remember, both Zechariah and Elizabeth come from priestly lines. It would be understood that his son would carry on in that priestly line. And they're still living in the first covenant. They're still living in what we call the Old Testament. And he gives him insight. He won't be filled with wine or liquor, but he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. While yet in his mother's womb. You know, I went to uh, one of the word worships. And it stood out to me. They read part of uh, Psalm 139. Word worships are our brothers and sisters from Friendship Community, if you're unfamiliar. And I remember them reading this. For you form me, you form my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you, when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in your book were all written the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. Before... 
John was born. While he was yet in his mother's womb, it is said that he would be filled with the Holy Spirit. When we think about where life begins, we must remember these verses. And he goes on to say, It is he who will go as a forerunner before him, that is the Christ, in the spirit and power of Elijah. They're still living in the first covenant. Elijah, when when you think of the prophets, the law and the prophets, you would think of Moses and Elijah. Who showed up at the transfiguration? Moses and Elijah. And Zechariah, after 400 years of silence, after 400 years of this nation not hearing from God, Zechariah is being told, not only will your, your wife give birth in old age, he will walk in the power of Elijah. So side note, uh, one of my family members watched our Wednesday night live and she said, why is Doug shouting? Um, This is how I talk in everyday conversation. So if you feel I'm shouting at any point, just understand I'm not angry. This is how I speak. Um, Let's step back into the Bible. Um, John was going to be filled with the power of Elijah, the spirit that Elijah carried. And yet... He was a forerunner. So where Elijah may have been one of the greatest prophets in their eyes, the angel's telling him he will be a forerunner. John will be a forerunner. And he says that he he will be a man who will call the nation and call the fathers back to repentance, back to God. And and Laura touched on this last week, Mary's response versus Zechariah's response. And what's interesting is Zechariah's response very much echoes Abraham. He's like, how can I know this for certain? And the angel says, I am Gabriel. Gabriel's mentioned one other time in Scripture, and it's Daniel when he's explaining the end-time visions. Gabriel stood in the very presence of God. This is... There is a thin wall between the heavenly and the earthly. Gabriel stood in the presence of God in his holy court, and now on this earthly earthly vessel, the the man standing in the court of, of God... At the altar, it says, I stand in the presence, and I have been speak to you and to bring you good news. And now you will be silent until the day when these things take place, which will be fulfilled in their proper time. This will happen. Now in my earthly mind, I was like, man, if I were an old man, you know, Ronald kind of said this, if I were an old man, I may not speak for months either. (laughs) Hey, you're going to be a father. Um, You're not going to sleep for days. Uh, And he returns. This is, he returns to his wife after he served in the temple. So he received this vision. He goes out to bless the people. The the people recognize he can't speak. They realized he saw a vision. He finished out his his priestly service for that week and then went home. The eternal presence and plan of God intersected the temporal life of this man. 
And this man was ever attentive for the Lord's voice. I wonder how often we may miss where God is leading or what God is saying because we're not attentive to His voice day in and day out. And yet, His eternal purpose will carry through. So Elizabeth goes into seclusion after becoming pregnant for five months. And now Mary, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, goes to Elizabeth. In those times, the messenger or the servant would go to the master. The lesser person would go to the greater. Age-wise, Mary was a teenager, and out of reverence, she would have went to her much older cousin. However, if you look at Elizabeth's greeting, there's some tension in there. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb. John, John leapt in, in her womb when Mary entered the house. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. 400 years of silence. 400 years of silence. 400 years of not hearing from God. And the Spirit fills Elizabeth. And she cried with a loud voice, Blessed. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord? Elizabeth acknowledges that the one Mary carries is her Lord. It's this kind of foreshadowing where Jesus, the King of all the universe, in whom all things hold together, enters into our world. The one with power enters into our weakness. The one who is pure enters into our sinful state. Would come to me. How has it happened that the mother of my Lord would come to me? Elizabeth recognizes that she should have went to Mary. For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby left in my womb with joy. So, even here, she initially says, Blessed are you. Here you have this personal intersection where God had entered into Mary's life. And Mary was obedient. Blessed are you. And now it shifts. Blessed is she, this is the third person, who believed that there would be fulfillment of what had been spoken to her by the Lord. Not only is Mary blessed, but any woman of God who hears the word of the Lord and obeys His command will be blessed. Can that be stressed enough? Do we tell our daughters and granddaughters, our sisters? Do we teach them to listen for the Lord's voice? And it says, And Mary stayed with her about three months and then returned to her home. So we touched on God cares for the unborn. 
but I want you to imagine your 14 to 16 year old unwed niece shows up at your doorstep pregnant. How would you respond? How would we respond? Would we respond with the love and the grace and the mercy that we have been given? Blessed are the merciful. Mary stayed with Elizabeth. And I imagine they cared for one another. Can you imagine the anticipation they must have felt not only to have sons in their own life, but what was to come? Can you imagine not only being barren and not being able to to have a child, to being filled with the Holy Spirit in your home? After 400 years of silence? Whew! In the midst of this dark, intense backdrop, there are these rays of hope and joy and peace and gladness. I came out my door this morning and looked over my neighbor's house and there was a rainbow. In the midst of tense times, there are rays of hope and joy and gladness and peace. God's word will be fulfilled in its due time. My prayer for us is that we are attentive to his voice and that we are first and foremost faithful to him. No matter who's in charge, and whose it's in the days of. That when we speak, we speak Christ. When we act, we act as Christ would. And that we may go to the servants of the Lord and and through Scripture and model our lives after theirs. May we be ever attentive to our Lord's voice and see His will fulfilled in our lives. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank You for today. We thank You for the merciful who have come into our lives. May we show the same mercy that we have been given And may you bless those who have shown us mercy. May you be ever near. May you fill them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet that they may be overflowing. And may we be ever attentive to your voice that we trust your word, that we trust your way, and that we see your kingdom come in our temporal lifetimes. We are dust filled with your spirit. May your will be done. We lift this to you in Christ's name. Amen.
this time of uh, COVID and shutdowns and closures and need and advent where we anticipate Christ, if you have a need, please connect with me or your deacon. If you are exposed to COVID or uh, come down with COVID, please let us know so that we can pray with you and so that we can help meet any needs that you may have. This is the time for the body of Christ to be the body of Christ. Our benediction comes from Luke 1, 57 to 66. And now for the rest of the story. Now the time had come for Elizabeth to give birth, and she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and her relatives heard that the Lord had displayed his great mercy toward her, and they were rejoicing with her. And it happened that on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother answered and said, No, indeed but he shall be called John. And they said to her, There is no one among your relatives who is called by that name. And they made signs to his father as to what he wanted him called. And he asked for a tablet and wrote as follows, His name is John. And they were all astonished. And at once his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he began to speak in praise of God. Fear came on all those living around them. And all these matters were being talked about in all the hill country of Judea. And all who heard them kept, in, kept them in mind, saying, What then will this child turn out to be? For the hand of the Lord was certainly with him. Go in the spirit and power and the hand of God. Amen. As we're able, do the same thing we do every week. Stand up, exit from the back. We'll see you next week. On behalf of Hempfield Church of the Brethren, we thank you for joining us for today's service. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.